All right, so we're here today uh, with Gilbert, and we're going to go through and fabricate a new transtibular below the knee prosthesis for him. Um, this is his second prosthesis, um, and one of the reasons we're doing a new socket, which is this custom portion right here that we make. Um, as you can see, uh, Gilbert's a big uh, Seminoles fan. He's got all his attire on, ready to go. Um, I tried to convince him to wear Syracuse stuff, but he said no. Um, one of the things, his residual limb has shrunk quite a bit, uh, or decreased in size, and so now he's been wearing all these socks to get his socket to fit. And these are 15 ply socks, which is quite a bit. Every ply is about three millimeters of additional circumference. So this is a lot of extra material he's having to do to make sure this fits appropriately. So that's the reason that we're doing a new socket. We're also gonna be providing a new prosthetic foot for Gilbert, Gilbert today. This um, is what we call a K2 um, functional level foot. Um, it's a foot that's uh, made by Oser. It's called the balance foot. It's a great foot, um, but he has been increasing his ambulation. He's not using uh, a cane or really any assisted device. Walks in and outdoors, up and down terrain, and have a lot of problems really going up and down hills. So we have a different foot we're gonna fit him with, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna evaluate his leg. We talked about if there's any specific problem areas. He's having some issues in the back here. A lot of that is because he's wearing so many socks. So all those socks bunch up here can cause some issues um, with the back of the socket. So the first thing we do is we wanna make sure, and we've gone through this already, but we wanna make sure that we are evaluating for the appropriate size liner that we will use for this new socket. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure his circumference. Okay, so he's right at about, about 31 centimeters. Um, and notoriously, uh, in the past, we would go down one size to a 30. Um, and I think that's still gonna be the right fit for him, but we still wanna assess the liner to make sure it fits well. Sometimes we have to go down a little bit smaller than that. Um, and there's a few different tests that we do to make sure that it's the right size. So first off, when I'm sliding the liner on, I invert it all the way, kind of flatten that out. And as I'm sliding that on, I wanna make sure that it's almost fitting the contours of his leg. I don't want this area to be way too big or way too small. So that looks good. I'm gonna slide this up and roll this up on his leg, all the way up. And we have a couple different tests that we wanna do. The first one we call it a pinch test. I'm kind of coming around on his leg or his residual limb and seeing, can I grab a lot of this extra fabric um, that it's not tight? And that feels really good to me. The other thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the distal end and see the contour with what this is what we call the umbrella. We wanna make sure that this is a nice smooth transition. Again, this isn't too big or too small because that can cause some pinching and some problems at the bottom of the leg. The last thing that we do is we do this test to make sure we're not gonna have too much pistonine when he's using his prosthesis. So what I will do is I'm gonna take my, here we go, uh, my uh, flexible measuring tape here, and we're gonna slide this up at the top just to hold it in place. And Gilbert, I'll have you put your finger right there and then straighten out your leg all the way. And so you see right here down at the bottom, we're right at 34 centimeters. And that number doesn't mean too much. I just wanna see when I pull on here, all right, how much distraction am I getting? So I went from 34 to about, you know, 34.2, 34.3. So that's two to three millimeters of distraction, which is great. We want to keep it kind of underneath that four or five. Um, so to me, the liner that we have here is the, uh, the correct uh, size uh, for, for Gilbert. Um, and the, so this is the right size casting liner that we'll use. And then the right size, as far as um, long-term the liner he's gonna use with his, with his prosthesis. So the type of socket we're fabricating is called a direct socket. The neat thing about that is we're able to fabricate and make this custom prosthetic, prosthetic socket uh, over his residual limb while he's here. Instead of having multiple appointments where he comes in for a casting or a scanning, comes back in a day or two or a week for a test fitting, and then another week, um, for a definitive socket fitting. We're gonna do it all today. So he's gonna leave out of here in about you know, two or three hours with his prosthesis. I wanna make sure the alignment with this pin, okay, is coming down and almost bisecting his residual limb. I don't want this pin to be turned to the side, down, up, around, it should come right off of there to make sure that it lined up appropriately. That looks really good. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some reliefs 
over some of the bony areas of his residual limb. So if I'm looking at his leg here, this area right here, this is called his tibia, all right? This is his distal or the bottom of his tibia. It's gonna be a problematic spot, so we're gonna have a little relief in through here. And I'm feeling around on his residual limb to see if there are other problem spots that we might need to accommodate for. Over here on the outside or the lateral side, there's a bone called your fibula. Uh, this is his fibular head. And again, can be a problematic spot. This is the distal end of his fibula down here. Um, right now, and that hasn't really caused him issues, so we won't create a relief there. And then his patella or his kneecap. That's going to be another spot because we want the socket to flare away from his patella that it's not hurting him. And then in the back here, behind the knee, you have your hamstrings. Um, and if Gilbert, go ahead and bend your knee for me. You can kind of see his hamstring right there want to pop out. Um, we don't want the socket to be impinging right in through there. So we create a little bit of relief so he can flex and extend his knee without it hurting. So to do all of that, we have different pads uh, or reliefs that we will throw in there um, that we'll use just for the fabrication process right now to make sure we don't have pressure on those areas. Um, and we have all sorts of different shapes and sizes with these pads that we use. Um, and we want to pick out the right ones that will work well for Gilbert here, which we got you know different shapes, different colors, different thicknesses um, that we will use. So the first one, because we have a left side, got that correct one here, we're going to put a little relief right over again that distal tibia. That tibia comes down and then it rolls medially here. So we are going to roll our liner back on. Again, I'm going to invert it the same way I did before. I'm going to hold that little relief pad there. And I'm going to roll this up. And I'm going to roll it all the way up to make sure that the alignment with my pin is appropriate. Now, this is turned inside just a little. Not much, just a little. I want to make sure I get all that squared away before we fabricate the socket. Because that will kind of uh, make some problems later on if we don't have it in the right position. Uh, so now we're coming back again and looking, and that's looking pretty good to me. But when we look at here, we kind of have it pointed down. So this is part of the process. I'm going to slide this off again and slide it up just a little bit. Roll it back up, and we'll take another look. There we go. Now we're coming straight off. That looks great. We have our relief there, so all that looks really good. Okay. So now we talked about that fibular head on this lateral side being problematic. So I'm going to put a relief pad. And the reason we kind of have this horseshoe shape is go ahead and slowly bend your knee for me. That fibula tracks posteriorly or it comes backwards like that. So I want to make sure I have that relief and then go ahead and straighten out again. So it's coming here initially and then sliding back posteriorly when he flexes his knee. So we're going to use that relief pad there. The next ones I'm going to grab are going to be for his hamstrings. You have your lateral hamstring and your medial hamstring outside and inside. Um, and the lateral hamstring is a little bit more to the outside, a little bit more lateral. Go ahead and flex your knee, bend it back. So we're kind of right in through here is that hamstring. And what I'm going to do is slide this little relief pad. It's very close actually to that um, fibular head. Uh, on the medial side, the medial hamstring is a little bit more towards the inside of his leg. And so again, we're going to slide all this in here and make sure we have a good relief for that medial hamstring. And the last thing I'm going to do, this is just to create a flare in general at the back or the posterior aspect of the socket so that when he's bending his knee, it's not too tight up against him. Last relief pad I'm going to do is for his patella uh, right here, which I'm going to slide this, relax that leg just a little bit, and I can feel his patella kind of distal end of the bottom is right, right in through here. And so I want to make sure that this pad is accommodating for that and then straighten out again for me, Gilbert. Perfect. And then we're going to roll this right on up like so. And so we, you can kind of see that big old pad we have here so that the socket is going to come away from his patella so it's not too tight. And then right underneath his patella, 
This is called your mid patella tenant. This is an area we're going to push in a little bit um, and have some uh, pressure there, but we don't want too much pressure on the patella. So that looks really good. All right. So that was our first step. We got all our pads. We have our liner on there. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to slide on this compressive silicone sleeve. Um, part of the process of making uh, this direct socket is that we want to make sure we have very good um, compression over the leg. And this helps to make sure that it's nice and tight um, and we don't have too much movement that can cause irritation. Obviously with his other socket, he's in a spot right now that he has uh, multiple socks that he's wearing. Um, and so that's too snug, or I'm sorry, too loose. And we want to make sure that the socket is nice and snug. So I'm going to slowly bring this sleeve up over all of his residual limb here. And we want to make sure that this at least comes up above what we call the socket trim lines, or what we're actually going to cut out um, that he will use with his prosthesis all the time we believe the devices we provide are just tools to help patients achieve their mobility and functional goals um, and so we want to make sure that uh, they're working appropriately um, so that they can go after and do those things now question though like because I've, I've heard you talk we're talking about the pads yeah now i know the pads that are in that one was an adjustment that we made to so it wasn't those on this new one that's those pads that are in that that we put inside the socket oh sure aren't going to be in the new one right because it's no. not going to need the adjustments you got it great great great, great point uh, what gilbert's talking about is again because he had shrunk so much you can see there's some brown pads we had to glue in here and that's on either side if you remember we talked about that distal tibia or that tibial crest can be a problematic pressure area um, he shrunk down so much that we needed to put pads around there so it wasn't wasn't hurting. But no, we won't so start off with so those. those. All right. We won't start off with those. So this next little step here, this is just to make sure once we get the fabrication process rolling that we don't make a mess. Um, you know, Gilbert's looking so nice, we don't want to you know mess up his uh, nice burgundy. Is burgundy? Is that right? Garnet. Garnet. I'm sorry. I knew there was a fancy word for. Um, we're looking at yes, garnet. and it's not even gold. It's they call it Vegas gold. I just thought it was gold too. I always thought it was garnet. Vegas and gold. gold. But apparently the t-shirt guy said no. It is garnet and Vegas gold are the official colors. Okay. Of FSU. Well, I'll tell you, Bobby Bowden would be very uh, proud. We got a true fan here that knows knows the colors. Um, I'm gonna br have you bring this behind you. So let's oh, this around. Around. Perfect. And we are going to attach that here. And that is just holding all this up. Okay, and now, so think about this silicone sleeve we're putting on, it's like a bag. Um, it's a very tight bag that we're putting around where we have the uh, liner and his residual limbs so that when we go into the fabrication process of adding the resin, um, which is kind of the glue that holds the fibers together, we don't want it spilling out all over the place. So this seals, um, creates a bag and seals it on the inside so it doesn't get all over his leg and all over the floor. Um, and then we will put another bag over the outside um, to hold it in that way too. All right, so this is a little distal silicone cap that we're sliding over and Try and get as many of the wrinkles out. This is all going to be on the inside of the socket, so it's nothing that anyone will see. But, you know, we want it to look nice. I'll have to see it. Yeah, I, Gilbert's got to see it. So, geez, we got to make sure it's nice. Okay. Good, good. All right. Now, we are making our way over here. The socket is made out of, uh, the one we're doing for Gilbert is made out of fiberglass. So these are six layers of fiberglass weave, okay? Right now, super flexible, you know, not anything that you can bear weight on. Once the resin gets inserted or impregnated into the fibers, that's where we get our strength. So that um, these are weighted up to 365 pounds, which Gilbert is very far away from that number, so we don't have to worry about that at all. 
All right. And so what we're doing, we're turning this inside out here and I'm gonna slide this over the bottom and I wanna line this up. So my little piece coming out right here, which we'll attach the resin to in a minute, we want that to be at about one o'clock. So if this is 12 o'clock, we're having that just over at one o'clock, so that looks good. I'll tell you, it's a process, we gotta sew, we gotta be able to tell time, mm -hmm. lots of skills. Three. trim lines are going to be coming right in through here so all the stuff up at the top will be outside the trim lines first thing that we're kind of getting ready for is we're going to put um, fabric on the outside of the socket once we laminate it and so the patient brought in some custom fabric so he's a big fsu fan so we're going to put that on the outside of this prosthetic socket so i cut out a pattern and i'm going to kind of stitch and make a sleeve i'm stitching it inside out because i'm going to turn it back the right side so when we slide this on the nice part of the fabric is on the outside of the socket so we got that we're going to come over to our sewing machine here and we're going to go ahead and make this sleeve and then even though he's getting a new socket we can still use the old one as a good template for the size of the sleeve that we'll make for it. All right. not think once you got into prosthetics and orthotics that you have to be good with a sewing machine but it is something you have to be able to do Stitch, you can't really see it at all, right? So, I'll slide this over and make sure it lines up appropriately. How we want it to look, we're going to put that seam in the back. it kind of fits nice and tight there looks good and then he wanted his Florida State emblem right in the front um, so this is the front of the prosthesis so that's where it'll end up and then this bottom area again will just kind of tie in tight right in through here so it looks good okay um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slide the first layer up and I'm gonna have to kind of tie this on I definitely want to make sure that's nice and snug. You need to hold. If you can hold this right there for me, just for a moment. Um, so this it's a little different process of how we normally do a lamination for a socket. So normally, when we're doing these laminations, the patient is not here. We're doing it on their on their, um, uh, uh, we take a cast or a scan, and so it's on a mold that we're doing all this portion here. 
that we're not doing it right over the residual end. All right, so now we're gonna turn this and roll this up. Make sure we don't have that wrinkled around. So now we have our um, custom fabric rolled on there very nicely. And now, again, we talked about that inner bag that we had. Now we're rolling on our outer bag. Again, this is to make sure once we are fabricating and getting the uh, resin in there, it's not spilling out all over. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut us some little holes. Okay, same thing over here. Hold that. Held up very nicely. Okay, now we need to seal the bottom. We seal the first layer with the bag, and now we get a seal outer layer. Put these two little bands around. I always say we have our medical grade electrical tape and the dad. I got dad jokes. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right, so it's coming around here and then we're really going to torque that down. Hey, I can help you out with the dad jokes, but I don't have a leg up. <laughs> Ooh! We've got MPD jokes. I got dad jokes. The five o'clock show will be different than the nine o'clock show. Remember to tip your service. There you go. All right. So we are cutting off the bottom of the bag or the sleeve. It's acting like a bag. here and now we're gonna seal that underneath like so so in theory no resin falls out is what we want okay all right all right Last step before we kind of get going to fabricate is we want to know where our trim lines are. Um, try it just a little bit, relax the leg. Mm. Easier said than done. Very. All right, so there's our mid patella tendon. There is our distal patella. We're drawing some trim lines here. Got our condyle. We're gonna come up here and then we get to draw. Drawing's fun. Around here. And again, this just gives me an idea. When I actually make it, I can fine tune the spots over the trim lines. I want to extend that mid patella tendon line all the way around the leg. So I know. Oops, sorry. No, you're good. I know where I need to bring all the resin so that we have the appropriate amount for this arc. Okay. All right. Now we get to do some chemistry stuff over here. 
when I say that, we just get to shake up the bottle. Sometimes we put pigment uh, in there, but we don't need to do that today. Okay, so we have our resin here, all right? This resin is an epoxy resin. It has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Um, sometimes when we're doing these types of uh, laminations where we're trying to use a custom fabric, we would rather use a clear resin. Unfortunately, with a direct socket, there isn't really an option for that as of right now. So there may be a little yellow tint um, when we're going through and seeing the final product. If that is um, not where we want it to be, what we can always do is do another lamination over um, this one. If the outside doesn't look as good. Uh, I want to make sure that's inserted all the way in there, nice and tight. Just is going to hold that there and keep it kind of facing up so the resin doesn't come out yet. Perfect. Okay, we got all of our tools ready. Okay, so I always go through last steps, make sure we have everything set. We have our liner, we have our alignment set up, we have all of our relief pads, we have our six layers of fiberglass, we made this custom fat, well, we didn't make the fabric, we made the sleeve, um, Gilbert brought the fabric, uh, put that on, we have our second uh, sleeve with our trim lines, we have our epoxy resin, uh, shaken, shaken up, shaken up uh, really well. Everything is sealed. We got this in here. We got our bags to keep the mess to a minimum. Um, and I'm going to put some of these tools here because I will need to grab them. And then after we do this initial stage, we have over here our bladder that we will roll on to really get some good compression. Okay, so we are ready to start. So what we're going to do um, I'm going to get my phone here for a little timer. Okay, because we have 10 minutes before the resin hardens up. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. There we go. Good. Yeah. So that will start coming in here. We can kind of see it darken a little bit. As far as the fabric, and we're starting to roll up or push up our resin. And again, we have those trim lines. We're trying to get the resin all the way up to. It's called stringing the resin up. We want to make sure that every single layer of our fiberglass is getting impregnated with that resin. We don't want to miss any layers. And the lights off, back on. We want to make it a little bit more challenging. First time we do this, we leave the lights on. Second time, it gets too easy, so we gotta make it a little more complicated. All right, Jessica, go ahead and give me some more, maybe like six or seven squirts. And get them moving that resin right on up there. Good. Now we are going to crimp this here and here and the light on the back. I mean, the first time was kind of comical. Now it's kind of like, all right, light. Can, you, can you stay on? Go ahead and hit the silver tab right here. It just releases some of the tension there. Good. And then you can just hold that straight up. All right, we're coming over here. We're grabbing our bladder. All right. Okay, let's 
Bladder is brought to you by Oser. I want to thank all the people at Oser for helping out with this production today. No, they don't really get anything. That was a joke. Okay, we're going to bring that over that little nut there. Good. And then as I'm sliding this up, I'm releasing the air. So I'm lift your leg up just a little bit. A little bit. I'm going to roll that on the up here, like so. And then I'm going to start to increase some tension. I'm going to roll up this. Try and relax your leg best you can. Coming up. For Gilbert, we're coming up to 80 PSI. And now we kind of hang out for a little bit. What I like is we didn't have any resin that really spilled. That means it's all on the inside. This? Mm -hmm. Oh, so this bladder, um, the reason for the bladder is we want to make sure again to provide good compression over the leg so that the socket is nice and tight. Um, if the socket is too loose and the residual limb is moving inside there, um, it can cause problems. Um, so we're at five minutes, so we have about five minutes to go that we're going to take this off. What we did is at the eight minute mark, we went from 80 PSI up to 105. And the reason for that is that we want to make sure the top or what we call the proximal aspect of the socket, which is right here, if you look at his old socket, that should come in snug around the knee. Okay. We don't want that to be too loose. And he has a lot of play back, back and forth. So within the first five to six minutes, the distal end has already hardened up. Now the resin is hardened up up at the top and that's why we can still snug up even tighter, but it's really just snugging up the proximal, the um, top now, of the socket. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna release some of the tension to take this off. We're going to let his leg fall back down. I'm gonna release that tension down to 20. The PSI, I'm gonna roll the bladder back. Okay, and then it should be able to pop right off there. And now we can take some of these different things off. We're gonna start with getting, that's a little bit of the resin right there, but making most of it stay where it was supposed to, so that's good. We got a nice little tool here to unscrew this. And then nice little part right here we can put right in on our that pin. Unscrew that. Okay. And put that there. Now we're gonna release pressure here with our strap and a little bungee cord you can hold on for me and then I'm going to roll down some of this excess material and then we're going to slowly slide it off it's very normal for it to be pretty snug because we have a lot of excess material so even though it may be slow coming off once we cut away a lot of the excess material, it'll be fine. And the big thing is kind of getting it over the knee or the patella, uh, which. Good. All right, the inside looks great. Okay, so what we're looking at, we got the socket off. We want to make sure that that resin, again, it has that little yellow tint, kind of a white yellow, um, that it's all the way around where our trim lines are. That looks great. Um, and then we'll go in the back and kind of take a look and see how it looks in the, in the front. So now we're in the back. We've finished our lamination, and we're getting ready to trim out the socket. So we're kind of taking off. A lot of the things that we put on, um, we 
have kind of that distal plate um, that is kind of where we get where we get our alignment from and our distal adapter will will attach to so there's some screws i'm going to take out but first i'm actually going to knock out this piece here if i do it right which i think i did the resin stays in this hole i'll end up grinding it down but that will seal so that this socket is a hybrid suspension where we're going to utilize an internal seal as well as a locking mechanism a pin lock and so we need to make sure that the socket is airtight um, so that we can get that suction suspension. So the extra resin seals that hole that the resin came in before. Right in through here and I'll grind that down. The one thing I did find, again, we did this custom fabric. Some spots look okay, but a lot of resin that I didn't get strung up in the back. One thing that's challenging, normally when you're doing a lamination on a with a patient again you have the mold so the mold is sitting up here and you can walk all around it you can kind of see it's very easy uh well easier to do the lamination as far as stringing out all the resin we'll end up doing another lamination over this cosmetically so we can have another cosmetic finish as far as with the fabric structurally this is fine like it's going to work out great you know no problems nothing that we're concerned about but that is still something we're working on with these direct sockets to be able to do that custom fabric well. And I'm hoping eventually uh, that they'll have some different uh, resin that we can use that maybe will allow us to do that. Okay, so um, I had marked kind of my trim lines. I know where my patella is and here's my mid patella tendon. So I'm gonna make a little mark here with this China marker. And then as I'm coming around, I know my patella Cut out. It's kind of right here. So I'm just drawing some of my trim lines that I'm going to use as a reference when I'm trimming this out. So I also know there's the center of my patella. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to flip it. So as I'm looking at it and I'm going to flip it so I get the center posteriorly of my posterior wall that should be the same line or in uh, the same line of progression as what I'm looking at in the front or anteriorly. So I'll flip that over and make sure, and actually it's a little bit more over here, almost where my seam was. The other thing is I'm gonna take with my medial and lateral wall, if I come all the way out to the edge, I'm gonna slide that in a little bit. Technically we're trying to do about nine millimeters. Um, and so I'm going to make some marks of where that's going to be. And the other thing, I have my mid patella tendon here. So if I'm setting this down on the table, okay, uh, and my amount of flexion that I want for the socket, I'm going to make a mark. Sometimes you can use your eye, you can use a laser level, you can use a rubber band, all sorts of stuff uh, to see where that mid patella tendon would be, which is right here. Um, and he's got a pretty short residual limb, so I'm going to stay pretty close to that with my trim line in the center. But when I'm looking at medial and lateral, medial side, lateral side, my medial hamstring, if you remember when we were talking earlier, is a little bit lower or more distal than my lateral trim line. So I'm going to make kind of like this W shape here. The other thing is my medial hamstring is more towards the center, okay? Lateral hamstring is more um, towards the outside or, or more laterally. And so when I'm looking at the depth, my lateral hamstring is going to be a little bit shallower when I'm looking at that W shape than I have on the medial side. And again, I'm drawing a rough shape here so I kind of have an idea and we'll smooth it up. I have my patella right here shape. Um, I had my trim line of where I'm coming above my condyle. I can come a little bit higher with the trim line and get a little bit more knee control because we don't have a sleeve or anything that we're using that we're worried about when the patient sits that it would tear up or cause an issue with. So again, we are connecting the dots and kind of our overall shape with our trim lines. And now I'm going to cut it out.
going to start trimming up the socket so we have the right trim lines that it's going to be more of the shape of this old um, prosthetic socket. I'm wearing these gloves um, because with this fiberglass that gets over your skin, it's nice and itchy, which I'd rather not have to deal with. what we call a router that we have different kind of sanding and buffing cones we can use to trim up all sorts of things to kind of get to a better better shape so we'll use this rough cone and then we'll smooth it some and wet sand it all at the end uh -huh. 